Hi, Jake Thorne here with uh, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension. Today I want to talk about a tool that sheep and goat producers should have at their disposal. Uh, not a device or a piece of technology, but more of a strategic tool. And that's the ability to bring animals into confinement and feed them. Uh, so, confined feeding. Now that's certainly a term that draws a lot of negative rhetoric from the non-agricultural community. And we're not going to go in that, into that today. But even amongst ranchers uh, and producers, you know, putting animals in the feedlot and on feed um, can have some negative connotations. Uh, but in reality, if done properly and at critical time periods, it can be the best situation for the animals, uh, can be the best situation for the land and your wallet. And so we're gonna go through some four, uh, four key areas that I think that need to be discussed where confined feeding could be beneficial. And the first one um, can be viewed right here behind me. Young pregnant animals have huge energy demands um, and they're really increased rapidly during late gestation. And these nannies behind us, these are first time kidders and they're about 30 days out from kitty. Um, and they were a little under conditioned. So we decided to put them on feed to meet those energy demands. Um, even, even mature stock uh, that are under conditioned are certainly candidates to be brought in and put on feed. And I think this leads into our second point. Uh, it can really provide a major cost benefit. So this ration that they're on, it's not the most expensive, but it's a Milo cottonseed holes, alfalfa pellet, uh, total mix ration. It's about $220 a ton. Um, that works out to 11 cents per pound. Uh, if they're eating three to four pounds a day, um, that's costing us 30 to 40 cents. And if we feed them for 60 days, that's $20. Okay, so that's certainly not an uh, insignificant amount of money. Um, but well, they're coming into a critical production time period, as we talked about, they're 30 days out from kitty. If we can improve our kid crop by providing the correct nutrition for these growing females, um, it's also gonna improve their lactation and thus provide more nutrition for the kids. And we're around to be able to assist with any issues that may arise with first time kidders. If we improve that kid crop by 20%, that's gonna pay for those feed costs. Um, now this doesn't come with any negative drawbacks. Uh, if we have animals in a confined space, there may be some more issues with mismothering uh, or from a health standpoint. But we're during a cooler time of, of the year. There's less dust because we've had recent moisture. Uh, we're able to provide shelter uh, here in the pens. And so in all reality, that kind of evens out. We're able to avoid some of those issues. Uh, the third benefit of confined feeding is more from a pasture standpoint. Uh, you know, we've had some recent rains, but collectively over the six month, last six months, it's been fairly dry. And we're coming into the growing season from a vegetative standpoint. Young plants are trying to get established. And if they're grazed heavily right now, that's not only gonna reduce the amount of forage that's out there right now, but looking ahead into late spring and summer, um, we're gonna be really compromised in the amount of forage that's available. And so that's something to think about too. Staying off of those pastures during this critical period uh, from a veget vegetative growth standpoint um, can be important. And lastly, this is a little bit of a, of a different topic and can be viewed here uh, next to me, is when we provide animals with proper nutrition, it allows us to make much better selection decisions regarding replacements, males or females. So these buck lambs behind me, They've been out in the pasture, and for the last 60 days, they have not really gained any weight. They've grown in frame, but they've lost condition. Um, and, and as such, their weight has stayed just about even. And what we're really interested in identifying in this group is are those animals that are uh, have genetics that are, are resistant to parasites. Um, but if they go into this parasite season, you know, the spring and early summer, immunocompromised because they're under conditioned, that's not going to allow us to identify which ones are superior because they're all going to be challenged from a parasite standpoint and all be showing issues because of that. And so we need to provide them adequate nutrition to allow them to reach uh, their maximum genetic potential. So we hope that this is, uh, you know, this is more of a philosophical topic and we hope this provided you some food for thought, but we believe that we have a moral obligation to take care of our animals, uh, to take care of the land, um, and sometimes confined feeding allows us to do exactly that. So with that, have a nice day.